Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Paramus, and welcome to the home of Paramus Fire Company number three. Um, I'd like to take a minute. Uh, are you going to do the introductions of uh, the dignitaries and everybody? Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, first uh, welcome the governor. Um, the congressman will be here shortly, but I do want to uh, recognize the chief of the Paramus Fire Department, Vincent Torrey. I, I do want to say that he's the chief of my fire company also. Um, this is, a, this is a, a firehouse that I take a lot of uh, pride in. While it's not the fire company that I belong to, um, I was the mayor when this was built and dedicated this firehouse to the members of the Paramus Fire Department. Uh, the sign up there, Borough of Paramus Fire Company number three, and my name is underneath it with all the other council members and the uh, fire chief. And uh, this is just <clears throat> how important it is to show this is our home. This is what we call our home, away from what our, per what our residence is with our family. This is our firefighting family here. And, uh, and this house was constructed, this firehouse was constructed to be just that, a home. And, uh, and I know the members of Fire Company Number 3 um, treat it that way. We also have with us the senator from the 38th District, Senator Joe Lagana. <laughs> Assemblywoman Lisa Swain. Um, we have the commissioners from the Board of Commissioners, Com Commissioner Chairman Tom Sullivan, <laughs> Mary Amoroso, <laughs> Jermaine Ortiz, <laughs> Rafael Marte, <laughs> and Commissioner Tracy Zur. <laughs> we have the Mayor Paramus, Christy Piazza, The Borough Administrator, Hector Olmo. <laughs> Councilman Bob Kaiser. And did I get everybody? Oh, I'm um, Councilman George Quintana. <laughs> so those are all the elected officials. We have, uh, we have fire inspectors and other fire chiefs here. And thank you all for coming. Um, I'm honored to be here with uh, Governor Murphy and Josh Gottheimer as they announce the allocation of $10 million in American Rescue Fund Recovery Act for the local and regional fire departments here in New Jersey. As a volunteer firefighter for over 46 years and a two-time fire chief of this wonderful fire department, I know how important it is to make sure our first responders have the funding and tools they need to do their jobs effectively. As I said, this, this firehouse was built with taxpayer funds from the borough of Paramus. Actually, you're sitting on a farm. This was Frank Kleenput's farm. His house was out in the front, and he had a farm back here. The firehouse is actually that building that you see, the original firehouse is that building that you see right in front of this house. That building still stands. I spent many hours there with many of my colleagues here. Um, but we realized that we needed a, a home, and, uh, and this firehouse was built. And that's where these funds come in, how important it is to get federal funding, to get state funding, to keep our firefighters safe and give them the tools and the equipment they need. That's why throughout my tenure as the county executive, my administration has prioritized investments in our police, fire, and EMS workers so they have the resources necessary to keep our Bergen County family safe. We just opened the $20 million fire training EMS and police training center up at the Law and Public Safety Institute. We just, we just have, we are in the design phase, actually we're in a construction phase now, of a new fire engine pumper to do pump uh, training for our firefighters. And Senator Booker has just put in $850 million for a new ladder truck for our county fire training center. So. Um, I thank you all for that, and that's how important it is to get these funds. <clears throat> Making sure that we commit what the resources that uh, the firefighters need is really what this is all about. 
And not only I have the backs of the firefighters, but Governor Murphy and also Congressman Gottheimer have the backs of our firefighters. And today is the proof of that. First responders should always be the ones protected. During COVID, there was a strain on the mutual aid community. This system was pushed to the brink. In Bergen County, because of that, we've now started a Bergen County emergency medical service response. The commissioners, I went to the commissioners and the commissioners saw the need. Many elected officials around the county were begging us to help with transportation of people here in Bergen County. And so we've now put that on in, in operation and we now have eight ambulances that we will now be putting on the road for the Bergen County residents here to make sure that they get the transportation they need to get to the hospital because we know how critical it is. Time is the critical element when somebody needs care. The announcement with, with which you will be hearing shortly assists us in, goal, in that goal making, making sure that our fire departments have proper fire protection, cleaning, making sure that our gear is cleaned after a fire to take the carcinogens out of our, our equipment and sanitation equipment. This all happens with support of many. And today, it's my honor to be able to introduce and welcome to Paramus Fire Company number three here in Paramus in Bergen County, our friend, the Honorable Governor Phil Murphy. I just said to Jim, you talk about a guy who knows the subject matter uh, in terms of why we're here today. Uh, and thank you, Jim, for your leadership of this county. Um, former mayor, and under your leadership, this was built. And as you mentioned, a 46-year volunteer and a two-time chief, so uh, incredible honor to be here and thank you for having me. I, I won't repeat everybody, but I, I do want to thank the mayor for hosting us in council and the borough administrator. I want to thank the chief, got to always thank the chief uh, for hosting us. Uh, and I want to give, obviously, to all the elected officials, Tom and the commissioners, um, Joe and Lisa, and Chris Tully's joined us. Uh, so Rockin' 38 uh, is here. Um, I do have to give a particular homage to Josh Gottheimer uh, to give credit where, where credit is due. T because today's announcement's not possible without Josh and his colleagues uh, on Capitol Hill and our ex extremely strong delegation. We are incredibly grateful for your hard work to bring home our fair share of generally federal American rescue plan dollars, but specifically for the reason that we're gathered today. I want to begin not just by acknowledging the chief, I'll come back to him in a minute, but all of the brave firefighters here among and among their distinguished ranks, I want to thank and commend the leaders for all of our state firefighters who have made this noble calling their profession. Our number one uh, firefighter in our administration is here, dear friend Rich Makutsky. I've lost Rich. Um, great to have you, man. He's wearing his jacket. He's given me a jacket, same jacket with my name, and like a dope, I left it at home, so I apologize. I stupidly put a suit on. I apologize for that, Rich. To his left, the president of the New Jersey Firefighters Mutual Benevolent Association and another dear friend and great leader, Eddie Donnelly's in the house. <laughs> president of the New Jersey State Firemen's Association, Robert Ordway. Robert. God bless you. <laughs> Vice President of the Professional Firefighters Association of New Jersey, another great friend, Anthony Tarantino. Anthony. <laughs> now back to our host, Chief. You know this better than I do. A big thank you, number one. But you guys celebrated your 100th anniversary or birthday last year here at Fire Company 3. So a belated congratulations on your milestone and to you as Chief, Deputy Chief Kurt Harba, Battalion Chief Dan Perez, and all the firefighters here, thank you for carrying on this incredible legacy of service and sacrifice. As this is an active station, Jim may have mentioned this, uh, and you're one of the busiest all-volunteer 
departments in the state. We will do our best to keep it brief uh, and stay out of our way, uh, because who knows, you may all have to jump into action if that call comes in. But frankly, that's a good jumping off point, because that's what you all do as firefighters. You're always ready to serve at a moment's notice. Doesn't matter if I'm here or not, you got to do your job. And for that, I commend all of you and thank you from the bottom of my heart. And it's all the more inspiring knowing that you guys are volunteers in our greatest moment of need. You drop everything you're doing to help us. So bless you all to all the firefighters and please God, keep yourself safe. Protecting the residents of New Jersey is probably my most sacred duty as governor. And a critical part of that means protecting our protectors by ensuring our first responders, and Jim got into this in much greater and more informed detail than I, but to make sure that they are well-funded and well-equipped so they can be as safe as possible when rushing into harm's way. That's why in this year's budget, we are proposed another $10 million for the American Rescue Plan Firefighter Grant Program to help local fire departments purchase safety gear and equipment, everything from PPE to advanced cleaning equipment, protective clothing to special breathing apparatus, and et cetera. And this is on top, by the way, of the $10 million that were allocated last year for this type of equipment. Now, folks, when we talk about a budget, it's easy to think of it as an abstract bunch of numbers on a page and to lose sight of the fact that on the ground, those dollars make a world of difference, which is why we're here today. In Paramus, by example, that $10 million of grant from last year meant these firefighters could get new particulate blocking hoods to help keep them safe. These hoods help keep out the nasty carcinogens that Jim spoke about and other contaminants in the air when they're fighting fires. That's a big deal because it's those harmful toxins that are tragically giving firefighters disproportionate rates of cancer. With the funding we allocated, the Paramus Fire Department was able to replace their worn-out hoods that were well past their usable life and putting firefighters at risk. Not only that, I'm happy to report the new hoods were an upgrade providing significantly more protection, which means our firefighters are safer. In total, Jim, I believe this number is right, firefighters from across Bergen County received more than a million dollars. The bulk of that went toward replacing critically needed safety equipment like self-contained breathing apparatus and turnout gear like protective helmets, jackets, boots, and gloves. And those are just some of the nearly 300 grants that we distributed last year to municipalities and fire districts. So these aren't cold budget numbers, they're not abstract. These are tangible things that can protect us and make our lives better. This is literal life-saving equipment, but not surprisingly, it doesn't come cheap. Those upgraded hoods we just talked about, they cost a lot of money. And local departments don't always have the budget for it, which is exactly why it is so critical for the state and federal government to step in and help out. It's also important on something like this that for every dollar either the feds or the state chip in, that's a dollar less that you've got to put on the back of local property taxpayers. So in addition to making a, uh, communities more safe, it also is a step toward making them more affordable. So that's another reason why we're proposing another $10 million in firefighting grants in this budget. And just like last year, we're going to prioritize volunteer departments and the departments and communities that were hit hardest by the pandemic. I cannot stress this enough. Our firefighters, our first respond responders, were extraordinary in their courage, dedication, and sacrifice in our darkest hours. I think back to the very start of the pandemic when we didn't know much about this virus itself, how you'd get sick, how many would get sick, or God forbid, die. Man, you talk about Monday morning quarterbacking three years later, uh, saying woulda, coulda, shoulda. Think back to a March, April, May, June of 2020. We didn't know almost anything about this thing. And even as our hospitals filled up, our first responders, even in the absence of that knowledge, were out there doing what they do best. 
but that took a toll in every sense, mentally, emotionally, and physically for our brave men and women, and financially on top of that for our departments. So as we em emerge from the pandemic, we're going to keep doing whatever we can to support our communities and the first responders who bore the brunt of it. And through this program, we want to continue providing grants to local and regional fire departments to purchase safety equipment so firefighters can feel confident knowing that they are fully equipped to be as safe as possible when heading into the unknown. So to all the firefighters and first responders here and beyond, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for your unwavering service. It is truly an inspiration for all of us. Now, it is my pleasure to hand things over again. We would not be here without him. I don't know a fiercer fighter on behalf of New Jersey across all of our interests, and certainly those of firefighters and first responders. Please help me welcome Congressman Josh Gottheimer. Thank you, Governor. I, I should have taken my tie off. I, I, I didn't get the memo here. Sorry. I took my lifts off today at Sullivan's, requ at Sullivan's request. Um, thank you very, very much. Uh, Governor, thank you so much for all you're doing to fight for our state every single day. Incredibly grateful. Mayor and Council, thank you for having us here. And Chief, uh, very grateful for all you do. It's good to be back here. Senator, thank you for your leadership on this critical issue and for all you do with, with our uh, excellent assembly members, Lisa and Chris. Chris, good tie. I like the tie. Um, uh, Jimmy, thank you so much for you know, your fight on every front, for looking out for people every single day, not just running into burning buildings, but running to just help people. And we're incredibly grateful. And obviously, you've got the best commissioners known to mankind, uh, with Commissioner Zer, Sullivan, Ortiz, and Amoroso. Thank you all for, for what you do. It's an unbelievable account. Oh, look at the man. The man, the myth, our new commissioner. Stan, come on. Give a round of applause. Rafi. Um, and I just quickly want to thank, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Rich, and Eddie does an incredible job with Matt, and, and obviously, uh, we also have the Hackensack Deputy Fire Chief here, Whalen, thank you so much, Deputy Chief, and of course, An Anthony's here, and I saw Bob and Joe, thank you so much as well, from State Firemen's Association and PFNJ, thank you all for getting the backs every day and looking out for our firefighters. Um, I, I do want to thank, as the Governor said and as Jim said, that we wouldn't be safe in where we are as a state but for the fact that we've got the best and the bravest. I mean, you, you, I think we all know that. You walk into a firehouse like this, and you know, if you don't get filled with pride for the, peop the, for the men and women who protect us every single day, I don't know what's wrong with you, because what you do is just re absolutely remarkable. And the least we can do is do everything in our power, and that's what I fight for in Washington. I know we've got a lot of people here who fight in the state and the county level and the local level. We should do everything humanly we can to protect you and to protect our communities. It should not be a fight, it should not be a discussion, but sometimes, unfortunately, it's way too much of a fight. Um, just recently, you were working overtime to put out wildfires just not far from here. Uh, whether, you're taking, whether you're fighting terror or taking care of people on the health side or dealing with flooding issues, literally it changes every single day and you don't miss a beat. So I just want to say thank you. We will always get your backs. That's our jobs. Uh, and uh, I know, I saw, Eddie, I saw your note this morning about Bobby Allen, uh, and we're all thinking about him, and I know he's undergoing surgery today, if you can give our, our love and our thoughts and prayers and, and, and our well wishes to his family and to him, and let him know we're thinking about him. Um, I, I, I think we were here about a year ago in Bergen County to announce the federal investment that you talked about a minute ago, what we got back, the initial tranche here to the state from the American Rescue Plan to protect our firefighters. Over, at that time, we, since then, we've clawed back $1.1 million for fire departments here in the 5th Congressional District, including $43,000 for Paramus alone. Today, we're back in Bergen, thanks to the governor's leadership and our Senate and Assembly leadership, uh, this time at Paramus Firehouse Number 3, to call for additional resources, $10 million additional dollars from the American Rescue Plan to get the backs of New Jersey's bravest. This new investment, when we get it across the finish line, I know you will, will go to the equipment firefighters need to keep themselves and our communities safe, including the clothing and the turnout gear from when our firefighters run into burning buildings, getting the air packs they need, and, and the rest of the equipment, all vitally essential for doing their jobs, protecting them, and of course, protecting us. 
We know how critical it is for our firefighters to have proper cleaning and sanitizing gear, as was said by both our leaders about the impact that can have on long-term effects like cancer, and making sure now that we know what we know about washers and dryers and other basic cleaning, every fire department in the country should have this sort of equipment to prevent and keep our firefighters safe. Last year, our American Rescue Plan Firefighter Grant Program for New Jersey, which again I really give the governor a ton of credit for, uh, got nearly 300 fire departments across our state, tens of thousands of dollars each. These are dollars that didn't, you didn't have to raise at a pancake breakfast. They're dollars that didn't have to come out of the town budgets. They're dollars that come back from Washington back to Jersey. And instead of going to moocher states, they come back here to help our firefighters, to help our families. And when it comes to protecting our first responders, whether that's firefighters, law enforcement, EMTs, we know that we have to invest to protect. That's why we're here, standing together to do the right thing, to reinvest in our American Rescue Plan Firefighter Grant Program for Jersey again for our local fire departments to purchase the gear and equipment they need. For seven years now in Washington, and I don't need to, you guys to push me about this, from day one, I know that my responsibility is to be able to get as much back as humanly possible and to make sure we back programs that help firefighters, whether it's disability issues, 9-11 issues, you name it, we should be there. Uh, just, the, the, uh, just in the last weeks, the CDC officially launched the National Firefighter Registry for Cancer, which we talked about, which is a program to track incidents of cancer among firefighters to better understand where they're coming from and give departments more information. We fought together for the Lessig Military Firefighter Protection Act, the Never Forget the Heroes Act on September 11th, Victim Compensation Fund, the Public Safety Employer-Employee Cooperation Act, and the Bipartisan Federal Firefighters Fairness Act. All of these have a common theme, whether it's helping with disability issues, health care issues, retirement protections, benefits, all things that you take care of firefighters for protecting us and, for, and make sure that we get your backs. Again, you shouldn't have to ask, we should just do. We know this year alone, we've lost 27 firefighters across the country, including sadly just recently, a firefighter in my district in Sussex County, Tony Duvin Vord, a longtime firefighter and life member of Sussex Borough Fire EMS, responding to multiple calls last month. It's why we have to keep investing to make sure we do everything we can, whether it's AFG, Safer Grants 1033. They help us cover those things and fill the gaps. And as the governor said, make sure that you're not having to go into your local property tax dollars for it. They come back from Washington to make life more affordable. In fact, the last time I was in this fire company, in addition to what we did last year, we announced $360,000 clawed back through the AFG program for radios. That's the kind of work we should be doing. We'll keep doing it. It is not a Democrat or Republican issue. It's just what's good for Jersey. It's what's good for our country and what's good for our families. And so I'll keep fighting. Uh, I won't stop. But I just want to say thank you for fighting every single day for us in the greatest country in the world, our best days if we stick together will always be ahead of us. Thanks so much. Thank you, Josh. Uh, as I mentioned, we wouldn't be here without your fight. So deep, deep appreciation. Um, and we'll hear from a couple of members in a couple of minutes from the 38th Legislative District. It's also a fair statement to say Certain states are, have food fights over how they spend the American Rescue Plan money. I think we're the adults in the room, and that's because we've got great relations with our leaders in the legislative uh, branches, both the Assembly and the Senate. But uh, we'll hold off on them for a minute. Uh, we can't come to his house and not hear from him. Uh, he's been introduced uh, earlier already, but please help me welcome the chief of the fire department right here in Paramus, Vin Torre. Vin? All right, thank you. Good morning. As uh, you all know, my name is Vince Torrey. I'm the chief here in Paramus. I would like to thank the congressmen, senators, assembly, and other elected officials for fighting for us every day. As you know, we go out, we fight fires, we deal with um, biological now with COVID and the new dangerous electrical vehicle fires. So all of these things have changed how fire departments operate. It also has raised the cost of certain PPE, particulate hoods, and SCBA. Um, 
the particulate hoods, they actually cost a lot of money, so we want to thank that. That keeps the cancer off, so that's one of the things that this grant program helps us. Also, what we just purchased, a new SCBA, the breathing apparatus. Um, God forbid something happens where a firefighter goes lost or a, they go down and we have trouble locating them. They have GPS trackers. We have special tools that we can go and find them quick so we can rescue them also. Um, what we also appreciate is the decontamination of our gear as we go into these fires and these new incidences with biological where it washes the gear and keeps us safe. So I really want to thank everybody um, from the bottom of my heart, the firefighters here and across the state for your work in trying to keep us safe and keeping us safe from cancer and everything else. So I want to thank you guys very much. Okay, and thank you. Chief Vincent Torre, one more time, Chief. God bless you. Hey, quick, uh, quick commercial. Uh, several of us have mentioned the pandemic and PPE. Um, I'm outing myself in terms of my age. I'm 65. The booster, uh, another booster for 65 and up was authorized last week. I went and got it this morning. I, I'm, I'm looking at a crowd where a lot of people aren't 65, but if you happen to be 65 out there, please go get your booster. Um, thank you, Chief, and to all your colleagues. You're doing an extraordinary job, both here in Paramus and around the state. I think the legislative district leaders in District 38 are among the very best in our state, both on the Senate as well as on the Assembly side. And we're going to hear from at least two of the three of them, although, Chris, if the spirit moves, you'll let me know and I'll drag you up here. But first up, please help me welcome Paramus' own Senator, Joe Lagana. Lovely. No time. Yeah, no time. I got the memo. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for, uh, for having me, just to uh, say a few words. Of course, I want to thank the governor for his uh, tremendous leadership. Uh, and he's absolutely right when he says District 38 has the best delegation in the whole state, so I can attest to that. Uh, but, you know, the governor is, um, you know, he spent a lot of time in, in the borough Paramus over, uh, over the last six years. Uh, and he was here for us in one of our darkest days uh, to, to our brightest days. Uh, and, uh, you know, his, his, his commitment, his leadership, uh, not only to the firefighters and first responders, but to all the people of Paramus, uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude. So thank you, Governor, for everything you've done for us. I also want to thank uh, Congressman Godheimer. Of course, these are federal dollars that come down through the state for us to spend. Uh, without him, uh, none of this would be possible. And he's been such a strong fighter for us. Uh, he kind of has a right idea, and that's the idea that we have. Uh, it's about representing our constituency, representing, uh, representing our, our, the municipalities that fall within our districts, to get as much back as we can uh, to help offset costs for local municipalities and for our taxpayers. And one of the, one of the biggest driving costs for our local taxpayers is, of course, uh, equipment like this. Uh, most people don't realize it, but a fire truck like that could cost a million dollars. And uh, the money's got to come from somewhere. So whenever the state steps in or the Fed step in to help with funding, of course it's a big deal. And there's no better way, in my opinion, to spend uh, any of this money uh, except on, um, on our firefighters. Uh, the firefighters that we, uh, we have in uh, you know, most of New Jersey, especially in our district, of course, uh, are, are volunteers, right? They do this because they love it. They do this because uh, they want to help people. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I can't think of any more honorable uh, job or profession uh, than, than, our, than, our, than our bravest who go out there each and every day, uh, put their lives on the line, and uh, they do it all because they want to help people. Uh, I live just six blocks away from here, so if I pick up the phone and call 911, God forbid, they're coming from here, right? So, you know, this is, this is very personal to me, um, and it should be very personal to all of us because we'll, it, in case of an emergency, that's what's happening when you're picking up the phone. These are the five men and women that will come to your house and, um, and offer assistance. And particularly in, in the town of Paramus, uh, which is kind of, uh, you know, right in the middle here of Bergen County with a lot of highways running through it, uh, they, they're, they're always out on the road, whether it's car accidents, whether it's fires, whether it's carbon monoxide detectors going off, whether it's floods, which of course happen all the time. They offer mutual assistance to the uh, surrounding areas. 
Uh, and we all know that flooding is a problem in, in, a, in a lot of this area, whether it's the Saddle Rose or the Passaic Rivers. So it's not, these aren't only fires they're fighting. They're, they're, they're out there doing everything. Uh, so I can't thank them enough. Uh, I'm just proud to be part of this today. And uh, I just want all of our firefighters, all of our first responders to know uh, that the District 38 team, the governor, our county executive, all the county commissioners, our mayor and council, we're all here to serve you and to do what we can to make sure that you have the best gear and that, that we're keeping you safe. So thank you and God bless all of you. Thank you, Joe. Um, deep, deep appreciation. Six blocks from here. We're going to swing by after and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Everyone's invited. Good, excellent, excellent. Um, I met Lisa uh, when she was mayor of Fairlawn, and I think it, it, it adds a richness and a dimension. Uh, if you've been, Jim embodies this, if you've had a, multiple different responsibilities in life, uh, it brings a different perspective that I think adds real value. She's an outstanding uh, legislator. Please help me welcome Assemblywoman Lisa Swain. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Murphy, for coming to Paramus and District 38 today and re-emphasizing your support on this critical issue. As we all know, firefighters risk their lives every single day to keep us safe from life-threatening harm. They are often the first responders on the scene of an emergency, witnessing us during our most vulnerable moments and greatest tragedies. They are the ones who rush into burning buildings to save lives and property, whether that be our beloved pets, a small business owner's local storefront, or the family home someone has spent decades saving for. They are the real life superheroes, not in the way they dress or the powers they have, but in their tireless devotion to serving others. However, unlike superheroes who only exist in movies and comic books, firefighters are real people with families, friends, and loved ones they rely, who rely on them every day, and it is imperative that we do everything we can to protect their, their welfare as much as they protect ours. An important part of doing their job safely and effectively is having proper gear, equipment, and resources, as everyone has heard today. Thankfully, though, through the continuation of the ARP Firefighter Grant Program, which allocates millions of dollars toward bolstering our local and regional firehouses, we are keeping the health and well-being of our first responders a top priority in New Jersey. Local firefighters don't just save lives, they also inspire us. They demonstrate the very best of humanity, showing us what it means to be brave, selfless, and dedicated to others. They are the role models for our children, teaching them about the importance of service, teamwork, and perseverance. More than anything, they put their lives on the line every day to keep us safe. It's time for us, once again, to give back and give them the funding and support they need while in the line of duty. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Well, so well said. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Chief in particular, thank you for hosting us. Mayor, thank you. Uh, to the commissioners, to Jim, thank you. Our great legislators and most importantly, our firefighters and first responders. I'll leave you with two words. Eddie, you paying attention here? Very important. Go Devils. Thank you all. <laughs>